did you know that whatever investments you are making in equity and whatever long term capitals are being generated are exempt to the extent of INR 1 lakh so it is entirely possible to withdraw your profits and even bring down your taxes to zero let's see how Hello everyone this is Shalini Gera welcome to yet another school of thought it is almost the end of the financial year and i'm sure that all of you would have planned for your finances but did you know that there are a lot of other unknown methods that you can utilize in order to drastically cut down upon your taxes so today i'm going to talk about some of the common methods and some of the not so common methods which will help you in reducing your taxes first of all section atc which is the most commonly used method Make sure that under Section eighty C, you are putting in one and a half lakh rupees worth of investments. This can be either in the form of your provident fund or your public provident fund, Sukanya Samriddhi Yojana, tax saver fixed deposits, ULIPs, term insurance policies, and also your equity linked savings schemes. Our financially recommended method in order to save taxes under Section eighty C is ELSS. So if you are already not investing one and a half lakh rupees through your provident fund as well as possibly through your home loan principal payment. make sure to make elss your friend what is the rationale behind this we recommend elss because elss will carry the least lock in period of 3 years and will also give you the maximum possible returns out of all of the possible options under adc this is because the returns are coming from equity linked investments so if you carry the risk capital for investing in equity then make sure that elss is your best bet because you will end up getting more than 12% returns over the next 3 years once you are able to come out of the lock in period remember that equity is only going to be volatile in the short term that is the next 1 to 3 years and after the next 3 years as soon as the lock in period gets over you will be getting at least 12% returns which generally come out of the equity market second method section 80 ccd 1b after investing 1 and 1/2 lakhs under section 80c you can also invest another 50000 rupees under section 80 ccd 1b that is the national pension system under the national pension system you will be investing into equity corporate bonds as well as government bonds through investing 50000 rupees you can get a tax deduction to the extent of 15000 rupees considering that you're coming in the 30% tax bracket know that it is only possible to withdraw at the time of retirement so when you retire you will be able to exit with 60% of the lump sum amount and remaining 40% amount has to be mandatorily annuitized that means you have to purchase an insurance policy out of it which will be giving you payments in the form of an annuity scheme the lump sum withdrawal is going to be tax free in nature but the interest payment on the annuity will be taxed at your tax bracket it is also possible to come out of the nps prematurely that is either exit prematurely or even make premature withdrawals this can be done for special conditions such as an illness the marriage of your children buying the house as well as for the education of your children third known method section 80d which is the health insurance scheme so even if you are a corporate employee and have been covered under the corporate health insurance system make sure that you also have a personal health insurance program this is recommended because after you retire or resign from your current organization you may not necessarily be covered by the health insurance scheme of the corporate and if you think that you will be able to find the health insurance policy at the age of 60 you have been mistaken see health insurance policies tend to take the least amount of risk possible so they want to cover you while you are young whether you are hearty and if you start scouting for a policy at the age of 60 most health insurance policies will step back from covering you so insure yourself while you are young and hearty also know that most of the group health insurance companies will typically end up offering you a cover to the extent of 10 lakhs and this may not be sufficient to cover a uh, family which is of two people or more must know parts about section 80c if you take a personal health insurance policy for yourself and your family you can get a deduction to the extent of ina 25000 in your taxable income and if you are taking up a health insurance policy for your parents who are less than 60 years of age and the same deduction of 25000 is applicable and if your parents are more than 60 years in age then this deduction becomes 50000 rupees section 80g if you are making donations to an entity and if this is covered under the income tax laws then make sure to carry the receipts and utilize them to save upon your taxes next a very very interesting method saving on taxes through capital gain did you know and whatever investments you are making in equity and whatever long term capitals are being generated are exempt to the extent of INR 1 lakh so it is entirely possible 
to withdraw your profits and even bring down your taxes to zero. Let's see how. Now consider for an example a person who invested 4 lakh rupees in 2024 and this amount grew to 7 lakh rupees in 2027. This person withdrew the entire 7 lakh rupees, gain was 3 lakhs, exemption was 1 lakh, that means the net profit to be taxed was 2 lakh. At the tax of 10%, the tax amount became 20,000 rupees. Now, if this person was smart enough, he would have withdrawn 1 lakh rupees in terms of profit every single year. Let's see how this works out. So, if two, in 2024, the invested amount was 4 lakh rupees, in 2025, the person would have withdrawn 1 lakh rupees in profit, which would have been tax free. In 2026, another 1 lakh could have been withdrawn, which was also tax free. In 2027, another 1 lakh rupees could have been withdrawn, which would also be tax free. So after these three years, the profit withdrawn was 3 lakhs and the original capital was 4 lakhs, which could also be withdrawn tax free because it's your capital. So the entire amount and the entire profit becomes tax free in nature. Now, one may argue that I may not necessarily need 1 lakh rupees after every single year. So don't worry, you don't have to keep this in your bank account. This amount can also be reinvested. Sixth known method, investment to your parents. Whatever income you are giving to your parents can be considered as income given for maintenance of personal expenses. So income which is given to your parents is completely tax-free in nature. And if this amount is invested in your parents' name, then both of your parents can individually utilize all of the exemptions which are applicable to you, such as Section ATC, ATD, ATG, and even the long-term capital gain exemptions in equity. So you can utilize investments in parents in order to save further upon your taxes. There are two points that you need to note over here. First of all, make sure that your parents are coming either in a mid tax bracket or in a lower tax bracket as compared to you. Secondly, make sure that you are becoming the nominee of all of these investments so that the ultimate benefit of these investments accrues to you. If your child is a major but is not earning, you can also utilize your child to make your investments and take advantage of all of the exemptions this time in the child's name. Make sure that your child is not a minor because if you were to invest in a minor's child's name, then the income that would be generated from that investment is going to be clubbed in your income. Also note that any income which is gifted to the spouse and then is invested over there is also likely to get clubbed in your income. Also note that if you're trying to use your spouse's account in order to invest, that is not going to help you in saving your taxes because whatever income is being generated from that invested income is going to get clubbed at your name. And finally, investments which are being made under NHUF. NHUF stands for a Hindu undivided family and any of the income which is being generated either through a gift or through a business income or through a house property that it could be in the form of rental income or it could be a business income. All of these incomes could be given to a Hindu undivided family and the HUF entity will also become eligible for all of the exemptions that we just talked about earlier. And finally, one final method or a tip for all of you, if you are accruing any kind of capital gains from your investments and there are also certain stocks or mutual funds and equity which are in losses, then these investments which are in losses can be withdrawn before the end of the financial year and they can be used to set off against the capital gains that you have generated. And once you have set off and reduced your tax liability, then you can once again buy those same stocks and equity which were in losses in the next financial year, thereby helping you to reduce your taxes. So this is Shalini Gera. I hope and I believe that this added value to your financial planning content. You do let us know on what other topics you would want us to talk about. If you like this, please do subscribe to our channel. It helps us a lot. This is Shalini Gera signing off. Take care. Bye-bye.